Hello and welcome to the Brett Norman YouTube channel on this Saturday, May 4th, 2019. And I have a quick video that I want to share with everyone on my channel about Roman Sunday. This is probably the most controversial topic in Christendom, always has been, always will be. All of the close friends that I have that are aware of what the seventh day is agree with me that, well, I just must say um, my good friends Tom and Yerk Glissman, Tom Fress and Yerk Glissman, both would completely back me up, I am sure of that. And I back them up. And the Roman Sunday is the Sabbath of the Gentiles, as far as I see it here on the Brett Norman YouTube channel. And I recently went to visit an old friend of mine who has always held the same belief as I have, that the Saturday Sabbath is the true Sabbath. And why is that? Well, I think it's extraordinarily simple. It's not complicated. All you have to do is look at the fact, the fact that Jesus observed the Roman seventh day, and so did the apostles observe the Roman seventh day. So that makes it Sabbath, does it not? Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. It's in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. It's simple. It's not complicated. But when you get down to it, people make compromises it's the same thing here where I live. If I were to go find a church and be with a congregation, they want you to do A, B, C, D, E, and F. And it has to fit in that structure. You cannot go outside the church structure. This is why I have a problem with religion in the sense that it is not pure. These Institutional religions are not pure. I have a problem with it. Yes, it's a personal problem, but I'm sharing it with you on YouTube because this is going to be a catastrophic problem. Um, you know, I've already had friends that have had huge, huge breakups in friendships because of it, but, you know, so be it. This is how the world works. Um, Satan knows he has but a short time. So he torments those that are uh, true followers of Christ, and we're going to have to just suffer with it. All right? And that's what this YouTube, YouTube channel is all about. It's about observing the Bible to the best of our ability. And I think my friends would be behind me on sharing this video, although uh, it probably is a Seventh-day Adventist video. I don't care in the regard that at least they are talking about the truth as far as I see it. I, I must agree. Uh, you have many different... Um, political and religious structures that are working together today to impose strict laws on the citizens of this earth through the different nations. And what does the Bible say? The Bible just simply says the nations are drunk. The nations are drunk from the wine of fornication. It's simple. It's not complicated. Jesus observed seventh day, Saturday, Sabbath, 
along with all the apostles in the book of Acts. You can read it and study it yourself. We, we went through it. There's at least a few references in the book of Acts to the Sabbath. And we're going through that on my channel. Uh, I've got those videos coming up and going up. And also, we're also uh, studying uh, the divine program of the world's history as well. And we're trying to do our level best with um, finding the unprejudiced truth about what religion really is outside of the institution, outside of the lucre that's involved. I don't ask for donations. I'm not interested in asking for donations. It's not about money. It's about the truth. You cannot buy a close personal relationship with Christ you have to make time for it. You have to do it on your own, in private, the way Jesus taught us to, by studying his word, by studying his practices, and memorizing scripture, and sharing it with everyone that you can. All right, because the Bible tells us what pure religion is. And it has nothing to do with making money. And it has everything to do with submitting to Christ, our Savior. And to bring the gospel to the people. And to me, the gospel is the entire Bible. From Genesis 1-1 to Revelation, the very end. I think it's chapter 2. 20 if I'm not mistaken but uh, yeah um, we are uh, getting dangerously close I think uh, chapter 22 excuse me chapter 22 verse 21 the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all amen that's the very last words of the Bible so, yeah, we are going through uh, some very interesting days. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but I encourage you to check out this video. I'm going to put it up right now at the end of this audio. And um, I got a bunch of Code Word Barbalon videos coming very, very soon. been working really hard on those. Um, I don't rush things on my channel. I just try and provide uh, thought-provoking, interesting material that makes you really question your faith along with others. And this is what it's all about. This is what the gospel's all about. And I just want to see that grow. I don't want to see it diminish. And it's the whole purpose. I have reached out to your Glissman and have uh, been doing some some, um, what would you say, um, oh, what's the word when you work with someone else? Ah, I forget this name now. Ah, uh, anyway, I'm getting a little fried. It's been a long week, been a long month, long year. This year already, we're not even really into this year other than, yeah, I mean, yeah, everything is so much stranger once you've studied history and studied uh, all of the controversial topics that we cover on the Brett Norman YouTube channel. I'm not saying that I'm uh, any better or anything than anyone else. It's just that, you know, uh, knowledge is very important in this day and age because there is a lot of people out there to deceive you. And what did Jesus warn us not to be deceived? Let no man deceive you. And that's the motto I try and keep on this channel. I try and show the controversy. I try and talk about the tough topics. Um, I try and uh, encourage others to do the same thing and to come up with their own 
materials as well. And uh, I just, um, hoping and praying for the increase in knowledge and the increase in understanding, because to me, that's all that I do this for, nothing else. You know, trying to keep myself uh, open and committed to bringing more quality work to YouTube and to my subscribers. So, with that being said, we will continue in the spirit of James Aiken Wiley studying his books. Uh, right now, we are currently working with Albert Close still. Uh, we did the 20 plus some session, late 20th session of uh, the Divine Program of the World's History today. And we're doing another session tomorrow. And um, we'll try and keep everyone informed and up to date. Um, and Code Word Barbalon videos are going to start coming out really fast now. Um, got a lot of, of uh, really good material now and uh, much more confident. It's just, just a matter of getting the time together to put them all together. So God bless everybody. We'll be talking with you soon. Enjoy the video. The 45th United States president is said to be anti-establishment, which in a sense is true because he is against the current established global authority. However, that does not mean one established authority cannot be replaced with another. Political commentators have expressed concern that the Trump presidency could turn into a right-wing, evangelical, neoliberal, fascist regime. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you raise up a man for such a time as this. God, we ask you right now that your choice is this choice. We believe, Lord God, that you ordain things. You said all authority is of you. Now, God, I ask that you would touch this man, Donald J. Trump. Give him the anointing to lead this nation. The pendulum has swung from left to right, Democrats to Republicans, Atheists to conservative Christians, pro-abortionists to pro-life, for gay marriage and against. Though Trump has distanced himself from gay marriage, stating he will let the states decide, the Democratic Party or the left under the Obama administration was a Jesuit-controlled operation from start to finish. Okay. Trump and Obama uh, are polar have, opposites. Uh, Obama was less conciliatory to the Zionist movement than his successor as Trump is an advocate of Israel's plan to continue building West Bank settlements. He is a supporter of the Zionist movement in the strictest sense, meaning the development and protection of a Jewish state like so many other Christians. Although the Bible clearly says that Israel as a theocracy is finished and not under the protection of God, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Matthew 23, 38. It is fascinating that some Christians hold the state of Israel in adoration, even though the Jews crucified Jesus. ...and signal his desire to shift U.S.-Israel relations. During the election, he said he would move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Obama has ridiculed Trump publicly. And I know just the guy to do it, Donald Trump <laughs> is here tonight. Now I know that... He's taken some flack lately, but no one is happier, no one is prouder to put this birth certificate matter to rest than the Donald. And that's because he can finally get back to focusing on the issues that matter. Like, did we fake the moon landing? What really happened in Roswell? And where are Biggie and Tupac? All kidding aside, obviously we all know about your credentials and breadth of experience. Um, for example, uh, no, seriously, just recently in an episode of Celebrity Apprentice, the steakhouse, the men's cooking team uh, did not impress the judges from Omaha Steaks. 
and there was a lot of blame to go around, but you, Mr. Trump, recognized that the real problem was a lack of leadership, and so ultimately you didn't blame Little John or Meatloaf. <laughs> you fired Gary Busey. And these are the kind of decisions that would keep me up at night. It would be safe to say that Trump will trash Obama's legacy of imposing a Jesuit socialist agenda such as Obamacare, as well as Obama's legacy of enabling terrorists such as ISIS to further their goals. The first order of business is to repeal and replace Obamacare. And that was our message today and it will be our message on Capitol Hill. And it needs to be done, uh, not just as a promise kept, uh, but because in the course of this election, uh, the American people had a choice. And uh, what appeared to many as against all odds, oftentimes with overwhelming opposition, our president-elect took his case to the American people to repeal and replace Obamacare, and the American people voted decisively for a better future for health care in this country. The Obama administration was left red-faced when Russia started bombing ISIS oil targets that bankrolled terrorism. Obama was groomed to fulfill the presidential role to further the New World agenda, not only by the establishment, but also by the Roman Catholic Jesuit order, which is liberal and left-wing in nature. However, the Jesuit order is chameleon-like, playing all sides, including right-wing politics, as seen in World War II. Himmler modelled the SS on the Jesuit order, as his uncle was a Jesuit priest. The Vatican is a patron of the Democratic Party, even though it is mostly atheistic and liberal. Vatican Council too planned to overthrow Protestantism and nothing does more of a sure work than liberalism, atheism and licentiousness. Republicanism and Protestantism is the secret of the United States' prosperity. Those nations that worship idols don't do so well. These include of course the Roman Catholic nations which are third world and don't succeed like Protestant nations. Although Trump did partially have a Jesuit education, he has been for the most part shunned by the Vatican United States geopolitical elite. Pope Francis' New World Order agenda was secretly pushed by the Obama administration, which was saturated by Jesuit trained staff. The plan was to implement incremental changes including the passage of Roman Catholic Mexicans into the United States to increase the Pope's political power. This would pave the way for an increased opportunity for a legislated Sunday law, which is a direct violation of the First Amendment of the Constitution. The Pope more or less told Catholics to vote for Hillary Clinton after the Mexican wall dispute. A person who thinks only about building walls, wherever they may be located, and not building bridges, is not a Christian. This is not in the Gospel. As far as what you said about whether I would advise to vote or not vote, I am not going to get involved in that. I say only that this man is not a Christian if he has said things like that. And I'm a very good Christian because the Pope said something to the effect that maybe Donald Trump isn't Christian, okay? And he's questioning my faith. I was very surprised to see it, but I am a Christian. I'm proud of it. Okay, for a religious leader to question a person's faith is disgraceful. I'm proud to be a Christian. And as president, I will not allow Christianity to be consistently attacked and weakened, unlike what is happening. Pope Francis has his tail between his legs, asking for dialogue with a new administration. Trump has given some speeches that reach out to Roman Catholics, but he would be foolish to align himself with the Pope, since the curses far outweigh the blessings. Catholics are an important part of the American story. America has been strengthened by hardworking Catholics from New York to California. The Catholic story is truly unique and it's a great story. From marching for civil rights to educating millions of children, serving the poor and helping to find the pro-life movement, clergy and lay Catholics across the country have made countless contributions to the American success and the American success story. Washington politicians have been hostile to the church they have been hostile to Catholics. They have been hostile to the members of Catholicism. My administration will stand side by side with the American Catholics to promote the values we all share as Christians and Americans. God bless you. 
God bless the United States of America. We will make America great again. You mentioned recently that you're a Christian, that you go to church. How, how important is your faith to Donald Trump? Very important. I'm a Protestant. I'm a Presbyterian. Uh, very important. I'm a believer. I'm also, you know, busy and probably busier than I should be. But uh, I am a Christian. I'm Protestant. I'm Presbyterian. Right. Pro-life. I'm pro-life. Gay marriage, where do you stand? Uh, I'm against gay marriage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not easy to do in New York, but I'm against. And I, I have changed views on different things over the years. Like? Well, like pro-life. I was sort of, I was always torn by it. I was always torn by it. Um, I'm very much, as an, uh, to take the other extreme, very much, very much in favor of the death penalty, especially for terrorists and especially for people that, you know, killers that you see so many with the girls that are being killed and then they they capture these guys i am so for the death penalty on the other side of the atlantic the modus operandi was to flood the european union with muslim refugees which would allow the geopolitical elite to divide and conquer further neutralizing any national identity preparing the world to be carved up into 10 regions as proposed by the club of rome the actual agenda of the New World Order establishment was to remove secular leaders from Iraq, Libya and Syria so that Sharia law can rule over the population under an administration subservient to the US Vatican Alliance, that the wishes of the Pope to enact a global Sunday law would be dutifully fulfilled. Perhaps this is why Hillary Clinton received donations from regimes who wish to implement Sharia law such as Saudi Arabia, who also host the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The agenda of OIC is to enact Sharia law that would also fulfill the role of evicting Christians in the Middle East and checking the spread of Christianity, which suits the Vatican. You may find this contradictory, but the Vatican is not necessarily trying to bring people to Jesus, but to bring honour and worship to itself. This would be achieved through a national Sunday law, which is actually pagan sun worship, not the worship of God, but more on that subject later. Behind the scenes, many Islamic leaders have compromised with the New World Order agenda and the 10 region plan to secure their seats of power in such as the oppressive monarchies of Saudi, Bahrain, etc. The US Vatican Alliance is not looking for partners, but client states. Greetings, I'm Governor Mike Pence. You know, it's my honor this year to serve as the Republican nominee for Vice President of the United States with my running mate, Donald Trump. I'm Grateful to be able to join you, if only by videotape, but I'm not sure how they introduce me. The introduction I prefer is pretty short. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. President Donald Trump will appoint justices to the Supreme Court who will uphold our Constitution and the rights of the unborn. Donald Trump will also sign into law legislation that will free up the voices of faith all across this country by repealing what's come to be known as the Johnson Amendment. The Johnson Amendment's literally been on the books since the 1950s, and it essentially threatens tax-exempt organizations and churches with losing their tax status if they speak out on important issues facing the nation from the pulpit. Donald Trump and I are both committed to work with re renewed Republican majorities in the House and the Senate to repeal the Johnson Amendment once and for all. Vice President Mike Pence is a perfect example of an individual promoting the image of the beast. In his childhood and early adulthood, Pence was a Roman Catholic. While in college, he became an evangelical, born-again Christian. His political views also started shifting from left to right during this time in his life, and we see the mixture of Roman Catholicism and apostate Protestantism, as Pence still holds his Roman Catholic roots in high regard and receives communion. Those who are interested in the prophetic role of the United States in the Bible should study Revelation 13, which describes two powers working together in the last days. These two powers, or beasts, in Revelation 13 are two kingdoms. A beast is symbolic of a kingdom or political power, as confirmed in Daniel 7.23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. The beast, or kingdom, that rises up out of the sea, signifying a densely populated area, just as a sea of people is also used today to describe many people, which points to the papacy coming out of the heart of Europe. The second beast comes out of the earth, meaning a sparsely populated area, pointing to the United States of America. Revelation 13 verses 11 to 12 Then I saw a second beast coming up out of the earth, 
It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf, and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. These two Bible verses predict that the United States of America will make an image of the beast, forcing the people of the world to worship or reverence the day that was created by the Roman Catholic Church. Sunday cannot be found anywhere in the Bible, and is the pagan sun worship day. Practically everything Protestants regard as essential or important they have received from the Catholic Church. The Protestant mind does not seem to realise that in accepting the Bible and observing the Sunday, and keeping Christmas and Easter, they are accepting the authority for the spokesman of the Church, the Pope, our Sunday visitor, February the 5th, 1950. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Revelation 13, 12. That's because Sunday is a day of worship. You're supposed to be in a Christian church. But wait a second, aren't we supposed to have religion, religious freedom in America? Some religions worship on different days. Because blue laws, which date back to colonial times, still ban that in a dozen states. Originally, they outlawed regular Sunday work. No buying, no selling, traveling, public entertainment, or sports even. People, it's baked in, have always had this temptation to let work crowd out all the other things that matter. Family, faith, and they have to be told again and again, knock it off, don't work. It's interesting. You think people yeah. are lazy, but they work too much. Americans work too much. Maybe, but they should certainly be able to choose their own days off. The idea that somehow a bunch of guys in a state capital somewhere know what's best for us in terms of you know how many days off we take and when we take them. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control the civil government that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. The image to the beast represents that form of apostate Protestantism which will be developed when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. When Sunday observance shall be enforced by law, and the world shall be enlightened concerning the obligation of the true Sabbath, then whoever shall transgress the command of God to obey a precept which has no higher authority than that of Rome, will thereby honour popery above God. He is paying homage to Rome and to the power which enforces the institution ordained by Rome. Yes. You say to them, yeah. look, I have to have the Sabbath yes. off, yes. which may I just confess that I learned in my first meeting with Devon, all these years I thought the Sabbath was Sunday. I've been going to church. We say worship on the Sabbath, worship on the Sabbath in the Baptist church. And you corrected me. You said, no, Sunday is the first day of the week. Sabbath is Friday sundown to Saturday Sunday. That's right. That's I right. stand corrected. He is worshipping the beast and his image. As men then reject the institution which God has declared to be the sign of his authority, and honour and instead that which Rome has chosen as the token of her supremacy, they will thereby accept the sign of allegiance to Rome, the mark of the beast. On September 4th through the 23rd, 2016, a major event will occur in the old city of Jerusalem. It will bring together actors, artists, musicians, and persons in the media from around the world. What on earth are they planning to do in Jerusalem? At an event that ends on September 23rd, leaders from Roman Catholic, Muslim, and Jewish communities will gather for one of the longest interfaith services in history, right there in the old city of Jerusalem right there where the Lord Jesus walked, right there where the temples once stood. They will offer worship to a God under the banner of ecumenism. It is there they plan to do away with categories of religion and ignore differences. The service will combine three monotheistic faiths under one roof in a house of worship for all believers. One part of the event will occur from September 5th through the 11th and will bring together Jew, Muslim, and Christian under, quote, a passion for Jerusalem in which they can all coexist temporarily under the wings of the Almighty, unquote. Some of the headlines on the website for this event talk about dissolving boundaries and coming together in worship of the same God. Another part 
the event will occur from September 12th through the 23rd. The leaders of this event, which is called Makudashet, will perform an 11-day consecration. If you aren't aware, a consecration happens when somebody performs a ceremony, declaring something as holy. The fact that Muslims, Jews, and Roman Catholics are gathering for a consecration means that they are all declaring their interfaith religion, their new God, to be holy. This is not good and may signal the beginning of the one world religion that Pope Francis has worked so hard to achieve in the year 2016. The Vatican indeed is one of the chief proponents of the ecumenical movement around the world and in Israel. For the past three years, Pope Francis has worked tirelessly toward a new world religion in which all denominations are brought together as one. If you look at Francis's outreach over the past three years and specifically in 2016, you'll find somebody who has openly condemned evangelical Christianity and the belief that you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. He has openly warned that this belief is dangerous. He has also equated the spread of the gospel under evangelical Christianity to jihadism. In the meantime, he has done quite a bit of outreach to every other religion in the entire world. Why is this happening? The extent of Francis's outreach to other denominations in 2016 alone has been mind-boggling. In February, Francis held an emergency meeting with Patriarch Kyrill of Russia for the first time since the 1054 schism. Kyrill then went directly to Antarctica, where he performed a bizarre religious ceremony, consecrating the land and water surrounding the continent. Francis has also done outreach to Patriarch Bartholomew of Turkey, in which both leaders voiced support for the migrant crisis and called for more migrants to enter Europe. In May, Francis met with Al Azhar of Egypt, who is the head of Sunni Islam. In January, Francis became the third pontiff ever to visit Rome's major synagogue. He has also hosted Jewish religious and political leaders at the Vatican. In June, Francis outreached to the Armenians. In July, Pope Francis visited Poland and told all of the young people in the audience to, quote, believe in a new humanity. In August, Pope Francis won a huge initiative with U.S. Lutherans. A document called the Declaration of the Way was passed by a majority of 931 to 9. It recognizes that there is no longer church dividing issues between Lutherans and Roman Catholics. This means that 3.7 million U.S. Lutherans are now absorbed into the New World Religion. Also in July, Francis was the driving force behind a ceremony in the United States called Together, organized to bring all Christians in front of a 6,660 in Chobalisk, or the Phallus of Osiris, for worship. One of the major symbols we saw at Together 2016 was the Ouroboros, which is the serpent eating its own tail. The earliest legend of the Ouroboros has to do with the coming of Osiris, the god of the underworld. The Ouroboros is a highly occult symbol signifying the end of an eon, or the end of time. In occultism, the end of one eon usually results in a reset, brought about by some cataclysmic event. When used together, the obelisk and the Ouroboros show us the coming of Osiris to inhabit his temple at the beginning of the next eon, which is the start of the Golden Age. The fact that this symbol was put on display throughout Francis's Together 2016 event is very demonic. What is Francis doing and why is he doing it? 
The answer is that he is merely carrying out a role, playing his part in the creation of a new world religion. In previous videos, I have discussed a book written in 1908 by a man who was ill for much of his life. He writes about how a character named Father Francis defects from Roman Catholicism to follow the Antichrist. In this book, Father Francis would become the leading proponent of the new world religion and worship of the Antichrist. Just recently, Francis has used death of one of his priests in France and an assault on another priest in Belgium to invite Muslims into Christian cathedrals and churches for worship. For the past month throughout Europe, since the attacks on the Catholic clergy, there has been a major drive by Francis to bring together Muslim and Christian and his efforts are working. He isn't attempting to evangelize these Muslims and to convert them. Instead, he is allowing them to bring worship of Allah into the churches in Europe. It has been prophesied that a religion of the New World Order would be established. It would dissolve boundaries between faiths. All would come together, united, in worship of the false light. There are Luciferians in history who predicted that Christianity and all religions would eventually collapse, making way for the religion of pure Luciferianism. A couple of these individuals was Luciferian and 33rd degree Grand Wizard Albert Pike, as well as Luciferian Helena Blavatsky. She viewed Christianity as a major challenge to the agenda of unveiling a new world religion. Christianity, in her opinion, would have to be done away with in order to unveil the new religion. We also have warnings from a former Jesuit who was murdered in 1999 that a one world religion was in the making. It was an ecumenical religion that was being set up for all to follow. Malachi Martin told us a secret in an interview with Art Bell before he died. Luciferians had infiltrated the Vatican and were planning to set up a new religion, one they believed would last for 1,000 years. Amongst Luciferian organizations, there is a prophecy that if they can invade the citadel, and that's their name for the Vatican, they will have power for a thousand years. How close are they? Very close. Okay, I got to interrupt this video for a second to inform my viewers on my channel that Malachi Martin, in my studies with Yerk Glissman, I think he might agree with me that uh, Malachi Martin is not someone I would put my trust in. So uh, take this with a very, very small grain of salt. Um, you know, hello, uh, we're dealing with the biblical antichrist here, and he's always been the man of sin, the son of perdition, his office, the office of the antichrist. So nothing new about uh, Luciferians being in the Vatican. They've always been there, infiltrated, They've been in there since day one. So I don't know what Malachi Martin's trying to do here other than confuse you. Uh, don't be confused with this statement. It's BS. You might remember when Francis came to America last September. We saw a major push toward the full ecumenical agenda. Francis's itinerary started on September 23rd. 2015, one day after he landed in the United States. He had set his sight on finalizing what his predecessor, Pope John XXIII, had set into motion on September 23, 1959. It was on this day John would offer a prayer that would begin the downfall of the Roman Catholic Church. A document would be penned declaring a new outreach to all religions in the world as children of the same God. 
Without a doubt, Vatican II is remembered as Catholicism's greatest push toward the new world religion. Vatican II would change everything about the actions of all future popes. It was now about piecing together a new religion, one that would be ready, waiting for the coming of the capstone. Pope Francis is truly preparing that new faith right now for all in the world to become a part of. Trying to Venezuela firsthand made me realize how much the media is lying to us about the reality on the ground. The U.S. government and its propaganda arms say it's a dictatorship where mass famine and civil unrest demands U.S. intervention. They deliberately don't tell you key facts. An economic war being waged inside by private businesses and outside of the country by crushing U.S. sanctions. Trump's sanctions have debilitated the Venezuelan economy, costing them $6 billion just in the last year. And sanctions do exactly as they're intended to do by hitting the poor and working class people the hardest. Their strategy is to starve the people into submission, then cynically use that humanitarian crisis as the premise for more intervention. They say that millions of people are demanding the ouster of Maduro. What they deliberately don't show you are the millions who support Maduro, who voted for him, who are also in the streets protesting this criminal coup attempt. They say that a coup is democracy that Guaido is restoring the Constitution by declaring himself president in a country that just held a presidential election last year. We've seen this propaganda playbook before, from Latin America to the Middle East, and it's literally being led by the same war criminals. John Bolton, who lied us into war with Iraq, Elliot Abrams, who facilitated a genocide in Guatemala. One million Iraqis died for a war based on lies, paved by the so-called free press. They're doing it again. All progressives and anti-interventionists have to stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Venezuela to defend their sovereignty and let them decide their own future, free from U.S. sanctions and intervention. We must call this what it is, an illegal coup underway by the bloodthirsty Trump regime to overthrow one of the last remaining independent nations in Latin America and plunder their oil. Trump has already threatened military intervention. Millions of lives are at stake. We need your voice now to speak up and speak out against another U.S. war.